Okay. Hey guys, welcome to Best Life Now. This is Super David. I'm here with Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi, everyone. Today it is January 5th and uh, happy 2021, you guys. Um, we're just feeling and flowing with everything. And um, I wanted to do something and we wanted to do something a little bit different, which was there's this great story. And you saw the title of today's broadcast, which is Do I Want to? Or do I have to? There's a lot of energies Hi. happening right now. And Jen, I'd love your expansion on this before I read this, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of expansions going on right now, physically, uh, in this current state and in this current planet and society, where people are thinking, this is what I have to do. This is what I must do. This is what I should do. This is what I ought to do. This is what yeah. I better do. Yes. And uh, yeah. it's really do you want to do it though? You know, is this what feels good? And so I'll read that here in a second, but yeah, any expansions before I do? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I love everything that you're sharing and, and this is the key doing things because they feel better to you. They feel good to you. Not that you're pushing the good, that you're really enjoying your life. Yeah. And, um, you know, prior to that, you know, we talked about in the previous Facebook live, the importance of being able to allow it, to allow it all. Um, you know, there's, like you had mentioned, there's so many different energies occurring all around the planet right now. Uh, so many different beliefs. And, and can you allow all of that to be? Can you let all the items on the buffet be there? And at the same time, focus in and choose the things that feel best to you, the things you think you would enjoy. Right. And um, that's really what this beautiful, magnificent life experience is about us making the choices that feel better to us and really trusting and flowing with our own feelings. So, yeah, uh, I, I love it. Yeah, I love that, too, Jen. And the story just goes hand in hand with everything you're saying. So um, this is a little excerpt, guys, from Money Law of Attraction, um, but it's titled Do I Want to or Do I Have to? So we just adjust here for a second and um yeah we'll go ahead and uh i'll share this with you guys this will be really really powerful and uh jen if there's any time you want me to stop you just let me know okay, okay. that sounds fantastic okay cool so um this is first jerry asking you know kind of sharing his experience with abraham and then abraham has a response you guys so it says do i want to or do i have to jerry says this he says through my early years while we lived on a series of 40 acre farms in Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas, I did many different things to earn money, all of them very hard work and none of them fun. From picking berries to raising and selling chickens to planting, harvesting, and selling tomatoes to chopping and selling firewood, I earned quite a bit of money for those times, but I didn't enjoy my work at all. Then, during my high school years in New Orleans, I worked at another series of non fun jobs as a roofer, a sheet metal mechanic, and an elevator operator. The first job I had that was any fun at all was being a lifeguard at Pont Pont Pontchartrain Beach. We had a hard time saying that in class two, Jen. So here we go. Um, I guess I was most like others around me, and it didn't occur to me that fun and earning money could coincide. This is big, you guys. During the time I was doing all of that not fun, very hard work, I was doing fun things after work. I got together with other kids in the park at night and played my guitar and I sang at church and in the choir with the New Orleans Opera. I led a Cub Scout group, performed acrobats and volunteered as a teacher of gymnastics and dance. I did many wonderful fun things, but I didn't earn money from any of them. I'm gonna flip the page here. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, Jen. You feel that as, you know, even in the, to the point where you're at in the reading, you can feel how, that's where his joy was coming from. He was doing other things in his life that were bringing in income, but he wasn't complaining about it. He just wasn't right. particularly knew that it wasn't his favorite thing, but he went about doing it. Right. Oh, but when he could volunteer his time, oh, when he could teach gymnastics, we could dance, when he could do uh, these other fun things, these things right. he still looked forward to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Feel yeah. that. And, and, you know, just kind of consider in your life, are there things that you so look forward to that you so enjoy? Uh, you do them not because somebody's paying you, um, because they bring you such great joy. Yeah. Right. Yep. 
So I'll continue here, guys. So it says, however, once I became an adult, I never again worked very long at anything I didn't enjoy. Instead, I became self-employed, and those things I had been doing free for fun, I just kept doing. But then I started receiving money in return for performing them. I hadn't been training for or planning for a career in music or singing or dancing or acrobatics, but then the sheet metal workers union called a strike. And while I was out of work, a man at the YMCA gym asked me to join El Gran Circo de, de Santos y Artigas in Cuba as an aerial bar performer, which is an artista. And so I didn't go into the secure direction in route and they have secure in quotes secure direction in roofing and sheet metal that my father wanted me to plan for. It paid a steady wage and I was trained for it and was very good at it, even though I disliked it so much about it. He's talking about the sheet metal. But as a result of the unwanted union strike, I turned easily in the direction of what then became a truly joyous life of adventure and earnings. I be uh, yeah, I began as an acrobat with that Cuban circus and then stayed in show business and other aspects or another for over 20 years. Before I read Abraham, this is very powerful, guys, because you'll notice that he said a couple of really, really powerful things. He said, I hadn't been training for or planning for a career in music or singing or dancing or acrobatics. Mm -hmm. um, but then the sheet metal workers union called a strike. And then there's the other piece here that says this, which is I went at the YMCA gym, someone asked me to join. Yeah. Right, yeah. Jen? We were talking about this in class all day today, which it's that when you're in your own alignment when you're feeling and flowing with who you are these things come to you yes you don't go you don't go seeking yes. them they yes. come it comes the universe comes to you and that's so key because right here right at that point this is where people often gum themselves up yeah they can identify something they love they go oh i love to maybe play my guitar and sing right? I'm just picking something. Oh, I love it. How can I make money with it? I need to make money with this. And they push up against something they love. Notice Jerry didn't do that. He wasn't planning. He didn't have a strategy to make all this vast money. What he did was, no, he liked making money, right? He, he wasn't enjoying the activity of, um, that he was you know required to do to to earn the money but he liked having an income but oh he loved doing these other things and he wasn't pushing up against any of them right and as he was feeling so good the things like you said dave they presented themselves to him he yep. he didn't have this magical scheme lined up so if you're thinking okay i need to find what i what uh, find figure out what I like to do and then I need to figure out how to make money at it yikes that thing that you love to do may become something you don't enjoy so much anymore so the idea is to stay in alignment with what you're well, like and I got to experience that for myself because I can say for an artistic standpoint Jen, I got to experience that for myself with teaching voice lessons because mm -hmm. I loved learning voice lessons and I loved going about um uh, sharing my knowledge on voice lessons. But then when I tried to make it into profession, I couldn't stand it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that was in my early college days. But then something beautiful happened, which was um, as things kind of opened up, and this was right about the time that YouTube was becoming very popular. Um, I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I was able to just share this knowledge on YouTube? Not once thinking I would even get paid for it. And I did get paid for it. You know, it, it wasn't necessarily consistent or anything like that, but my, my intention wasn't to do it to get paid. My intention was to do it because it was a fun thing to do outside of the regular work that I was doing. Yeah. Then to have a check from Google, hey, that was just icing on the cake. Nice, nice. Yeah, so, right, so, you know, just, just to say that again, really line up with what you love. Jerry loved earning money. He liked that he had an income that felt good to him. He did that from even when he was just as when he was old enough to work. He's, you know, a little bit older. So he began working younger than typically our kids do now. But he really did like earning an income, right? He liked that. He wasn't pushing against that. He liked earning his own money, but he also liked these other things. And he was just allowing himself to enjoy the aspects that he enjoyed. He knew he didn't enjoy um you know, being the roofer or being the sheet metal mechanic so much. That, those weren't, he was good at them, but they weren't really, they weren't 
ringing his bells, so to speak, but he did like the money that was coming from it. So he just flowed with it. He flowed with it. He flowed with the joyful aspects of it and didn't push against what wasn't working. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I got to experience that for myself too, uh, with my dad, you know, and he has a, his own construction business. And when I wanted to get away from it, I pushed myself away from it, which of course, because I pushed so hard, dropped me right back into it because that's where my vibration was. But then right about the time that I started getting uh, hooked up with Lyft and started driving, that's not only when I stopped pushing up against uh, my dad and his business, but also there was beautiful things that were being exposed with Lyft where it was like, you know, I'm doing so much with Lyft that I really don't have time to to help you with this anymore. And there was not this weird like uh, resentment either from myself or from my dad, because instead of whereas before, uh, and even multiple occasions, because this was a job that I worked with my dad on and off since I was 15 years old. Guys, I'm in my late 30s, so you do the math. It was so fun because now instead of pushing, I was really allowing. I was allowing things to be. It's like I was allowing him to go, you know, this is his business. Mm-hmm. And, and that's great that I've had so much opportunities in his business, yeah. you know. And by doing that, it allowed him to understand that, like, and he knew it wasn't my passion, but he could see how much I was enjoying driving you know? And so it was, it was very easy for him to just go, okay, you know, good luck with all that, you know? And then I've shared this with you that the relationship that he and I have now, because we're just really allowing each other to be who we are, uh, is, is better than it's ever been my entire life. And I know that it continues to expand because I'm not setting forth intentions of how do I make this improvement with my dad? Right. It's flowing with what feels good to me. And by doing that, I'm allowing him to flow with what feels good to him. And then when we come and visit with each other, it's just two guys hanging out. I love that, right? So, you know, so just to reiterate, right? It really is you lining up with what you love to do. So it's not you going, well, I love to do this. How can I make money on that? We talked about that. It's also not you loving to do something, you know, but then kind of holding in the back of your mind, I'm just going to keep doing this so the money flows in. I'm just going to keep doing this, right? It's not, you're, you're working against yourself. Just do yeah. what you love. So uh, the first thing, right? Whatever you're doing that's bringing revenue into your life experience, if you like what you're doing, fantastic. Let that grow. Let that expand. If you're not totally in love with it, well, are you in love with the paycheck? Are you in love with the money that's coming into your life experience? You know, allow yourself to appreciate and and let that flow and expand. The fact that you have a way of making this income. You don't have to love, right? We're never, or like even, um, aspects of your life that you don't enjoy. We, not, nobody, never is saying you need to like something you don't like. If you don't like being a sheet metal guy, you know, even if you're good at it, but it's not really your, your cup of tea, but you like the paycheck. Well, I like the paycheck. I like having a steady income. I like, you know, having some money in the, my bank and whatever, paying all my bills, etc. And I love doing these things. Just right. let yourself go with the things you like, the aspects of the things you like. Don't focus yeah. upon what you don't like about your work. <laughs> don't focus upon okay, I like playing guitar. I'm just going to keep playing it until somebody pays me. Right? <laughs> it's No, do it for the love of it. Do it for the right. joy of it. Right. And like right. Gary, you will see when you become joyful enough, when you become accepting enough of the joy and the things you like in this life experience, the, the law of attraction and your inner being will bring together those cooperative components. Like for Jerry, that, gosh, the whole union went on strike. And then somebody came to him and offered him a job that allowed him to do the gymnastics and to sing and to dance. And well, to- and it was perfect, too, because yeah. now that he was no longer working, I bet he decided to go and do more stuff at the YMCA. So now he's there at a time when he would have been working. That's this is this right. is like winning the lottery, guys. It's like all these beautiful components tied in beautifully to make to to create this and to allow this to be and jerry was in the receiving mode of that and and i and i love that jen because you know we can think of ourselves of our own examples of this you know um tons right um i wanted to read what abraham wrote here too though because yeah this is this is 
this is going to clarify some things, guys, um, and just expand on everything that Jen and I have been sharing. So take a listen. It says, hear how the details of your life clearly demonstrate the things we have been offering here. Do you see how those early years of working so hard at things you did not enjoy helped you to not only identify what you did not want, but also helped you to determine what you did prefer? And even though you were working as a teenager still at things you did not enjoy doing, you were spending a great deal of your time every spare minute, really doing things that you really did like very much to do. So the two parts of your equation for joyful creation were in place. The hard work caused you to ask, your time playing music and doing the gymnastics and such that you love that you put into a chronic place of allowing. And then through the path of least resistance, the universe delivered to you a viable path to get the freedom, growth, and joy that you wanted. I'll pause there, Jane, because I mean, that's, that's, that's it. That's the key, that's you know, key. and, and whether it's, you know, my example of talking about driving or, you know, uh, heck your example with best life, you know, I mean, exactly. you weren't, I mean, it, it's it, exactly. Right, right. It, exactly my experience with Best Life, right? It right. really is. You know, prior to Best Life, I was, um, earlier on, I was like a super mom, right? I loved being a mom. And I was the room mom. I was the team mom. I was so in love with being a mom and every aspect of it and the activities that my kids did. And I loved organizing the different events and all of it. I loved it so much so that when the thought crossed my mind, because now uh, my oldest child, my daughter was getting ready for graduation and Nick just had a few years left in school. And uh, I was thinking, you know, maybe I would like to do something else. I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Didn't think about it too much, but just had it kind of in the back of my mind, like mm, maybe I'm kind of open. And I had um, somebody come and approach me, not just once, multiple times please come work for me, please. And this was an area that I had not any experience in, but they were so convinced. They said, this, this will be, you will enjoy this so much. This will be perfect for you. And it was uh, selling, uh, you know, working in the beauty industry and selling uh, beauty schools, right? It was in cosmetology and, um, and it was fantastic. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. It gave me clarity though, like Jerry, right? to some aspects that weren't as much fun and other aspects are really, really light, right? And, and I appreciated all of it. And my core intention always has been, you know, and, and I knew going into that job when I flowed forward, you know, onto the next aspect of my life, I said, I'll leave it better than how I found it, right? I will leave it better. And um, I did. And, you know, another opportunity just presented itself. It just, right? And, it, and I just kind of flowed forward to it. And then it was like, well, that's why. And it was like the easiest thing. These things presented. I didn't seek them out. Um, now, granted, before Best Life, I made a wonderful connection with uh, somebody I'm still connected to this day. We were just texting I love yous back and forth to one another, a dear friend of mine, um, you know, that we really talked about what we enjoyed, uh, the things we liked. And um, both of us have gone forward to you know, really be living those things we've talked about. Hers was in the area of roller skating and mine was, you know, more directed in the direction of best life. I didn't know it was called best life. I didn't know any of the specifics of it. I just knew that I loved sharing about the law of attraction. I liked people feeling good. I like people knowing that they control their own life experience and it's about feeling good. And of course, things open up and they continue to do that. And it's the most magnificent thing. Yeah. And uh, isn't it wonderful? And I will say just in contrast to yeah. just to know, I've also had things where I've tried to pursue them, right? I want this and I will get it. And those kinds of things never really panned out. And sometimes even if I got to them, I was like, this it is what I want at all. Or it right, wasn't right. what I wanted. It didn't right. feel good. Or like you said, it wasn't sustainable. Yeah. So uh, it's very much about allowing and allowing it all and trusting uh, the universe, your inner being to bring those cooperative components to you. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. yeah? That makes sense too, Jen. Cause I got to experience that in music too. You know, the, the yeah. last, you could say musical band that I was with 
we were so adamantly wanting to create the CD, right? And really create the CD and everything that goes with the CD and the release party of the CD. And got to tell you, you know, in the beginning stages, it was really, really fun. And as we kept pushing, it became exhausting. And, you know, the only real relief was when the CD was done. And because we were so exhausted and kind of at that point at each other's throats, because we'd all pushed each other so hard, of course the band broke up because there was no joy even in the creation process of it. You know, there, there was, there was mild joy in the writing of the music, but then in the creation of the CD, it was a very serious, stubborn, you know, this is how it has to be kind of affair. And, uh, it took all the joy out of it, <laughs> but it was perfect because like you said, it was, it was where I gained that clarity and the rockets of desire that I fired, you know, yeah. led me to best life. Yeah. Really. Right? And, right. um, because in this, in best life, I get to be as creative as I want Yeah. and, um, you know, flow in the direction of, of my true desires and, um, really utilize my voice. Uh, maybe not singing necessarily, but absolutely utilize my voice, which I know is a very powerful gift of mine. Um, and the message that I can convey with that voice. And it's everything that we're talking about here, guys. So whether it's Jen's example or my example, it's really going with your desires and flowing uh, with what feels good to yeah. you. Um, I'm going to continue reading here, Jen. I, I love that we're talking about this, but I just want to wrap this up here with this little story um, or segment rather from Abraham. But it says, because of the intense unpleasantness, right? We're just talking about these things. Because of the intense unpleasantness of those early years of very hard work, you were one of the few who was strange enough or weird enough or different enough to allow yourself to seek your bliss, right? That's so funny. Like, oh, it's weird. Oh, it's strange. Oh, it's so different. Why would you? Okay. Whatever works for you, Jerry, right? And that led to many things that you had come to desire. Most people feel a stark difference between the things that they want to do and the things that they believe they have to do. And most have put anything that earns money in the category of the things I have, and they have have underlined to do. That is why the money often comes so hard, and that is why there is usually not enough. Yeah. I'll pause before the last paragraph, Jen. You want to add anything? Yeah, right. So, you know, and and it is really Jerry. Jerry, he's a business guy at heart, and he loved making money. He was working jobs. I think before he was probably even a teenager, yeah. he was doing things to earn money in different ways. He always enjoyed that aspect of his life. He enjoyed making the money, right? He he enjoyed having that energy flow to him through him. So you know that's step one. Do you enjoy having energy flow to you and through you that is monetary do you like that you know and don't get all philosophical but i'm ex i'm exchanging my effort for but just do you like the process of receiving <laughs> and spending money do you like money in money out do you like that right does it feel good to you if it if there's parts of it that feel uncomfortable just, you know, figure out, right? Just plot yourself on the scale where you're landing and then gently open up so you can feel better about yeah. receiving money. And then what other things do you like in your life? Do those. Do you like to sew? Do you like to walk? Do you like to sing? Do you like to dance? Uh, you know, what do you like to do? Uh, you know, what kinds of things bring you joy? Do you like to paint? Do you like to, uh, you know, cook? Uh, whatever it is, uh, go about doing those things that fill your life with more joy and just yep. work on focusing more on the joyful aspects your inner being and your vibration that you are coming into alignment with by being able to experience more joy, to focus on more about the things you like will bring you those opportunities, right? When, so that when you say, mm, maybe I think I should, you know, maybe I'd like to get a job. And then somebody, you don't apply for any jobs. I never applied for a job once in my life, right? They come to you, not once, but they come again and again and again. And please, 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 right? Uh, like that. And, and the other opportunities come and present, right? Just like with Jerry, the, the union went on strike and somebody said, hey, what would you like to come and, you know, go to come to Cuba, right? We have a circus. And well, absolutely. 
right? The things, it, it presented itself, it felt good, and he flowed with it. Life right. will present you those things. But guess what? Life is always presenting you those kinds of things. That's right. You are not used to flowing with your joy, with your bliss, with your good feelings. They just yep. freeze right on by because you can't see them. You're not a vibrational match to them. That's right, Jen. There's no shortage of them. That's it's right. Just you being a vibrational match. Yeah. Well, and I love how you said, you know, you never had to apply for a job. Um, I did because I did lots of pushing on that. But what was so fun was when I started getting into the music pursuits and also my coaching pursuits, I never had to look for anything. Everything <laughs> came to me right. because I knew, you know, how good I was at it. And I also was never, like you said, in the space of being like, and I'm doing it to make money. It was like, man, this is so good. I'm, I'm so glad I have this as, an, as another gift. To, to, to offer to people. And then people would say, Hey, are you still doing that coaching thing? Or, you know, with the music stuff that led me into other things where I ended up doing some voiceover work, you know, uh, because of, because of that and different, you know, I'm not here to talk about all this, but we're, we're here to share with you guys that this is how it is. This yeah. is how, when you're feeling and flowing with who you truly are, you know, th there's lots of human streams of consciousness that even say things like, you know, do what you love and you, and you won't work another day in your life. It's true, but the thing is, is it's, it gets confused because what it really is, is it's by understand that you following your bliss, flowing on your joy mm -hmm. and really following that, mm -hmm. all that other stuff takes care of itself. Exactly. It really, really does. You guys, it really does. It really does. Yeah. Right. So, you know, so line yourself up with you. Like if you like having money, if you like money throwing through, flowing through your experience, well, don't push against that. Don't go, but my job is stupid, right? Allow yourself <laughs> to enjoy the fact that you have money coming in. Yeah. Right? Don't push against it. Allow the, the joyful aspect of it, but then focus on more joyful things, what you do enjoy. Allow your ability to be a vibrational match to enjoyment. Right. That's right. the key. And, I, and, I, and just like with Jerry, you can tell, and ideally... You know, if, if you guys are out there and you do have, let's say, a job or a profession that's not your preference, that's not the place to focus. Focus on things that are outside of your work. Focus on the joy that's outside of that profession. Because what you'll find is as you're focusing on that, very soon, gently and gradually over time, you'll be able to find things in your job yeah. that you do appreciate, that you do like. Right. And then guess what? More is coming. Whether right. it's right. a promotion in that job or a shift into a different area or a completely different job. Right. But now it's coming from a space of you feeling and flowing with who you are, or right. maybe even the most ideal thing that you've been looking for, because where's the focus, you guys, the focus is on you feeling and flowing with your joy. So I'm going to read this last paragraph, Jen, because it really ties in everything that we just said here. So it says, if you're wise enough to follow the trail of good feeling thoughts, right? We're just talking about this guys. You, you will discover that that blissful, blissful path will lead you to all things you desire. By deliberately looking for positive aspects along your way, you will come into vibrational alignment with who you really are and with the things you really want. And once you do that, the universe must deliver to you a viable means to achieve your desires. Yes. This is what we're talking about, guys. Yes. Oh, I, I love it. Those words are so <laughs> powerful. And it's so true. And it really is about allowing all of it. If you like yeah. money in your experience, then don't push against the source that's bringing it to you. Right. It doesn't mean you're going to stay there forever. The right. when, you're, when you're vibrationally ready to flow into another avenue or resource for that, it'll come right to you. It will. It will. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there's opportunities flowing all around you all the time. But if you try to seize them, right? I'm going to seize that opportunity, but you're not a vibrational match to it. It's going to sizzle, right? It's not going to work out very well for you. It's going to be hard. Right. It's going to be difficult. And right. don't take something that you love and turn it into something that now stresses you out because you, you're, right. I quit that stupid job I didn't like, and I'm going to do this thing that I do like, and it's going to make me money. And it's and going to work. Right. And now you put yourself in a really stressful position. Yeah. Right? Instead, let yourself get accustomed to I do like making money. I do like it spent, you know, enjoying my time. Right. And just get comfortable, comfortable, more enjoying, enjoying, enjoying. Things will open up. 
what you've asked for has been vibrationally given. It's yeah. not your job to keep asking for it. It's not your job to pursue it, so to speak. It's your job to feel good enough that you're a vibrational match to be open to receiving it. Yeah. Right? It's being offered to you all the time in different ways, uh, yep. but you can't see it or perceive it if you're not a vibrational match to it. Exactly. You're, you're, you're tuning yourself to whichever channel you are in that moment, right? Yeah. So if you're stressed, you're not going to be able to feel the joy of the abundance that you're desiring because that's not on the same channel. Yeah. And it ties into Jen that um, I'd love as we're wrapping up here today, um, if you could read today's quote, because it really ties in with everything um, that we uh, yeah. talked about here today. Right. Right. Okay. So this is the quote from today from Abraham, and it's an excerpt from a Boston work workshop uh, in the year 2000. So it's been a little while ago. So, and it says, could I think too little about my desire for it to manifest? Actually, no, because as the contrast launches the desire, and then you do not offer any opposing thought, then you're letting it in and it will manifest. Many of our physical friends really believe that they must find a desire and then hold tenac tenaciously to it. And we say, you do not need to do that. Let the variety of your life keep balance in your life. You just concentrate more on holding yourself in the good feeling place where you're letting it in. Mm. Yeah. Just focus more on the good feeling place. Mm -hmm. Right. Just just a little more. Don't don't push yourself there. Just <laughs> really feel the enjoying. You know, it feels really good. This I really enjoy playing my guitar. I really enjoy singing. I really enjoy sewing. I really enjoy painting. I really enjoy walking out in nature. I really enjoy petting my kitty cat. Right? I really enjoy. You know, I really enjoy cooking. I really, really enjoy this. And, and I really enjoy. And then, you know, just continue to expand your ability to enjoy, to feel good, to tune yourself to those things. Everything you've asked for is queued up and it's in that better feeling space. Yeah. 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 Oh. oh, your words are like soothing soup jen just so nice i don't know why i said soup but there you go just really feeling it and flowing with it so um soothing playfully soup. yeah i love it it's so great yeah i'm so soothing soup, soothing soup. i'm so happy you chose to read that yeah that really powerful yeah game. very very divinely guided yeah thanks jen yeah just just really really great and great great expansions and thanks you guys you know for for being here with us and um yeah. feeling this energy you know, as we're flowing forward, like, uh, you know, as, as a you're doing great. As a reminder, you're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. Really so great. just allow, your, uh, allow yourself to just acknowledge that you're doing great and uh, feel more of this, you know, do the things that you, you feel of that are joyful and just watch more joy coming into your life in every aspect and in every subject of your life. So uh, oh. amazing, Jen. So fun. Amazing. So, yes. Yeah, so thank you all for joining us. Those are here live or if you're watching the replay, I hope this brought you some value. I hope it made you feel good, even more joyful and know that you are loved and appreciated. So thank you all. Thanks, you guys. Love you.